Hi teachers, this April 24, Webal brings you the Vsmart Quiz B. Think you have what it takes to ace the quiz? Answer questions from science, math, English, Filipino, social studies, religion, and pop culture. Just form a team of five students from grade 7 to 10 and they will go head to head with other schools across the Philippines. Our overall champion will take home. 100,000 pesos. Registration is open until April 2022. So what are you waiting for? Register now! Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Facebook Live or YouTube webinar series. For the discussion today, the topic will be on Classroom Management for Blended Hybrid Learning Setup. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com or your e-tour accounts to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to all our Vibao webinars. Experience learning, Kavibao! And now, to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Leonilo Basas Capulso is a multi-award winning Filipino master teacher speaker and researcher from Pampanga, Philippines. Leonilo is a Dangal ng Bayat Award-winning educator. He is also the recipient of Asian Achiever Award, Gawad Pat National Award, Outstanding Research Advocate for the, of the Philippines Award, and Most Outstanding Teacher Award. As a research advocate, it has been his advocacy to promote the culture of research by developing school-based research and management in the region. He has initiated research capacity building for new researchers in the government and private schools. His network with other international organizations became a bridge in hosting international research conferences in the Singapore, Bangkok, Philippines, and Vietnam. His love for the less fortunate moved him to conduct studies and advocacy for community development in the depressed areas and initiated literary and faith program to select children of Makabebe, Pampanga. As an educational leader, he has written contextualized curriculum modules for values education for junior high school and written assessment and evaluation tool for the senior high school in the Department of Education. He holds a bachelor's degree in education, BSED, major in religious education, and master in religious studies, MRS, Catholicetics, cum laude, in Don Bosco Center of Studies, Paranaque City. He took a master of arts in education in the La Salle University, Das Marinas. He received two honorary doctorate in philosophy institution in Brazil and is preparing for his final defense on emerging model on promoting and enhancing research productivity in basic education for his Doctor of Philosophy Educational Management at the University of the Assum Assumption, San Fernando, Pampanga. Currently, he is a part-time professor at Urdaneta City University and a research consultant at Orado Global Schools, Colorado, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Cla Dr. Leonilo Capulso. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Leonilo Bicapulso. I am a researcher from Colorado Global School, Colorado, USA, and a part-time teacher in Ordanita City University in Ordanita, Pangasinan. So for today, we're going to share our discussions on um, classroom management in blended or hybrid setup. So allow me to share my screen.
So I hope this is visible already. So once again, good morning mga Kabibal. Thank you to Bibal Publications for always giving us this uh, platform to share insights on empowering and capacitating teachers and students or students preparing to become teachers and school leaders in our country. So once again, we will be discussing about classroom management for blended learning setup. So for today, these are some of our objectives or the things we need to, to do. We're going to discuss important concepts and strategies on blended learning explain strategies to maximize the use of technology in incorporating it in our blended learning setup, discuss the concepts of digital detox and its um, importance as we try to continue our hybrid and blended learning classroom in order to strike the balance in using our technology and our personal life explain the context of digital detox according to research studies and how it affects teachers and students in hybrid and blended learning classroom and demonstrate how to apply the digital detox as students parents and educators and those who are listening for us today so we know that uh, covid 19 is one of the very essential factor in the rise or in the advent of digital classroom or blended learning classroom. From our face-to-face -face mechanism to online or home-based learning, although uh, gradually we are now going back to our face-to-face -face classroom, but we could not set aside the importance of hybrid and digital classroom because of uh, the, still because of the threats of COVID-19. Technology indeed is changing the dynamics of our educational system, especially the relationship between teachers and students, and also with other uh, educational stakeholders. Bishop Abilio David uh, of the Diocese of Caloocan and a, a bishop from Pampanga uh, once posted in his Facebook uh, account which says, they said, no phone inside the classroom or inside the school. But today, the school is inside the phone. So for the last two years, this has become a reality or a daily event among our students, if not majority of our students. Andrew Kim says that uh, educators and school administrators should reshape educational spaces in providing a better learning experience to support educational evolution. That is why we would like to commend this initiative of Bibal Publication and other school leaders, other institutions who tried to really reshape, okay, recalibrate the, the educational setup, okay, the classroom from face to face to a digital classroom or a combination of both in order to, to support the evolution of education. I remember once at the onset of the pandemic, one regional director in the Department of Education said that despite of, of the pandemic, education should continue to provide a quality learning experience to students. Before, technology is used only as alternative to conventional tools, such as transparencies for overhead projectors, handouts, books, or pens. Today, as we continue to embrace this uh, new mechanism and modality, technologies are now transforming how instruction actually happens, you know, how teachers relate to students and parents and the home. Teachers will use technology to replace old models of standardized rote learning and creating more personalized, self-directed experiences for students. So kahit sabihin natin na unti-unti uh, na tayong bumabalik sa face-to-face, sa -face, but this time 
our adaptation of the new face-to-face -face mechanism already incorporated some dynamics of digital classroom or a hybrid learning uh, environment for that matter. The challenge to us, therefore, as school leaders, as teachers, as educators, is that as learning is becoming virtual, the virtual activities is actually becoming more physical. There is now the meeting of the virtual and physical reality. So for, for our students, in order for them not to, to feel uh, strange with the digital classroom, as some would still prefer a digital classroom or uh, online classroom, students should really feel the presence of their teachers and facilitators in front of the screen so it becomes more personal it becomes more uh, relational one uh, speaker once said that when you are looking at your screen you imagine as if your students are in front of you so do not just go straight to your lesson what you're gonna do is to to exchange pleasantries no Kamustahin natin sila? Kamusta ba yung araw nila? Ano yung mga magagandang bagay na nangyari sa buhay nila? Kamusta yung pamilya nila? Let them share because as we know well, um, that will also one way of our student expressing their other stress and other anxieties that they experience for this whole time of pandemic. But before we proceed, let's have a common denominator, a common understanding of a blended learning. So blended learning is also known as hybrid learning, okay? It is an educational model for teaching students both traditional and online learning environment. Meaning to say that as teachers would allow students to come to school, there are still other mechanisms, other maybe activities that can be done uh, virtually, that can be done through digital platform. So putting them together is what we call the hybrid learning or the blended learning used by schools and universities in the unbed of the pandemic. So sabi ko nga kanina, dito talaga natin nakita yung pag-usbong ng blended learning classroom nung pumutok yung pandemia. But as we later on uh, realize it will become endemic, uh, just like other virus for that matter, and they say that COVID-19 is there to stay, so we got to learn to live with it. But this time we are becoming more protective. So a blended learning will not only be used during this time of pandemic. Okay. But we have to realize that blended learning is not new, okay? Maybe for some of us uh, who just embraced um blended learning during this time of pandemic blended learning has been there since 20 or uh 20 hundred or shall we say in the year 2000 and it was noted that online education industry in the early uh 2000 raised actually to 900 percent meaning mas marami nang gumamit ng mga online mechanism Pagbukas na pagbukas ng year 2000. In 2025, it is expected to triple the number. Kaya nga sabi ko na kahit mayroon ng face-to-face, -face, marami pa ding mga, mga mechanism, marami pa ding mga activities na patuloy na gagawin sa, sa digital platform. Or it could be a combination of a face-to-face -face and a digital uh, classroom. And as mentioned, Blended learning is also here to stay. Both teachers and students, therefore, need to embrace this kind of model. Hindi na talaga natin ito ma maiiwasan. Nandiyan na siya palagi. And therefore, in order to, to, to sustain the quality of education, both students, teachers, and other educational stakeholders should continue to embrace blended learning. So dapat naging maalam tayo sa mga mekanismo, mga pamamaraan, and even security measures and ethical considerations for our students. Pero ang tanong natin, what really is the benefit of blended learning as people now uh, are started to, to shift to face-to-face? -face? Some of the benefits for teachers of blended learning is that it creates or provides additional educational tools. 
Meaning, the blended learning supports new ways of instruction. Kung dati, naalala ko nung ako ay nagpe-prepare pa lang sa pagiging guro, no? Yung dala-dala lang natin palagi noon, Manila paper, cartolina, and then later on, gradually, we introduced the use of overhead projector, and now the internet. And we know that in the internet, there are also online elements. So it provided teachers more tools in presenting the lesson, in facilitating the lesson. Kaya nga sabi nila, kung may isa pa din na nagbago ng, ng siste sa sistema ng education during uh, the, the digital classroom, is that in online classroom, teachers becomes or become more a facilitator than the source of information. Dahil maalam na ngayon yung mga estudyante. But the, the work of the, teacher, the teachers, the role of teachers is really to facilitate, to help a student identify which information that they got from the internet are real and which are fake news. Okay, So teachers can now use gamification, videos, and interactive applications. I know that some of you had been applying this, even the basic education, the Department of Education and Higher Education have all this initiative. Many schools have learning management systems, okay, where all of these things are incorporated. So kahit na sabi na natin na face-to-face -face na, yung ating LMS ay dapat nandun pa din because that would ensure us um, system, quality, and later on, uh, our way of, of checking and assessing and reflecting our own practices. Sabi nga, this is a new way to engage students, and not only students, no, also parents. What else? More efficient grading. Uh, dati mano-mano, ngayon, even if you have, for example, LMS or an ordinary uh, Microsoft Excel can provide us uh, a more efficient grading system. So online evaluation provides accurate and, uh, and past results. Alam natin na ang paraan natin sa pagsukat ng competencies ng mga students, if our students are actually learning, is by trying to assess their performance. May it be formative or uh, other way of evaluation for that matter, or summative. No? And... Um, the, the, the fast test, we could give feedback to our students as to their performance, the better, because students would be able to assess in what area, in what competencies they are doing well, and in what areas they need to really uh, give more time and effort. This provides a venue for faster feedback mechanism on students' competencies, as I mentioned. Okay. Personalized support. So, blended learning model allows teachers to mix and match tools responding to the needs of their classroom. So, nagkakaroon tuloy ng contextualized classroom because of uh, hybrid, digital, and online classroom coupled with the face-to-face -face classroom, ang, ang ating mga guru ay nagkakaroon na ng, ng creativity, nagkakaroon na ng, ng uh, venue, ng platform to integrate which of those tools are applicable to their students. Kaya nga nagiging contextualized learning. At isa sa mga model na maganda nating gamitin as we prepare our lesson is the Assure model. Why? In the Assure model, what we did is actually first to assess our students' learning style. So alam natin kung ano yung mga uh, talents na mga learning styles ng mga estudyante natin. Tapos tatapatan natin yan ng mga learning activities. And si teacher naman, yung kanyang mga learning activities is also a combination of uh, those uh, provided online by different applications, games, and activities, and those that can only be adapted in the classroom based on students' uh, social status and students' capacity, okay? Lalong-lalo na kapag pinag-uusapan natin yung online mechanism, yung kanilang internet connection. Students learn online and face-to-face -face follow up in the classroom. Ano naman yung mga benefits ng blended learning sa ating mga estudyante? Okay. Isa sa mga naging problema ng mga guro, no, I, I, before I resigned in the department in October of uh, this year, of 2021, I mean, uh, one of the challenges that teachers encountered during the, the online classroom 
is students have very minimal engagement. So, yung simpleng pag-like lang, nahihirapan sila. Yung, if you try to, for example, open a discussion in a discussion board, minimal ang mga estudyante na sumasagot. So, teachers are are trying to be creative. So, dahil marami silang nahihirapan doon sa online, nahihirapan sa internet, ang ginawa ni teacher, ginamit yung, yung text, no yung cellphone. So, uh, aside from the module na binibigay na printed module, uh, may mga follow-up activities pa si teacher na ginagamit niya yung kanyang mga yung text messaging para lang maipakita sa mga magulang at ma makapag-reach out sa mga estudyante. But for those who could afford, we know well that online platform, online classroom would increase engagement. Why? Sabi nga natin, maraming mga, mga mekanismo na pwedeng magamit kagaya ng laro, ng applications where students actually enjoy. Alam naman natin yung mga estudyante kapag laro, lalong-lalo na sa cellphone, nakakagawa sila ng paraan na magkaroon ng load. So kapag nakikita nila na ang pag-aaral ay para lang siyang isang laro, hindi para paglaroan, kundi para i-enjoy, na hindi siya talaga burden, it will actually induce or it will encourage engagement among our students. And research have proven this to be more effective. In a study conducted in the Center for Digital Education, 73% of educators testified that indeed uh, blended learning increased the engagement of students into 73%. What else? It becomes more student-centered, ang ating blended learning. So blended learning model is by design as student-centered. Bakit? Kasi yung mga activities na pinoprovide natin that we are providing in our blended classroom are basically based on the needs of students. Kung babalikan natin yung kanina, since you were able to identify the needs of your students, the learning styles of your students, all the activities now that you will be providing will be based on their needs, will be based on their learning styles. So provides more flexibility among students. They become more in control of their learning experience. And in, in the digital platform, in the hybrid learning setup, we actually adapt the synchronous and asynchronous learning mechanism. May mga pagkakataon na kailangan talaga makita ni teacher yung mga estudyante at the same time. No? May mga pagkakataon naman, lalong-lalo na halimbawa sa senior high school, ang mga estudyante dyan or iba sa mga estudyante dyan, lalo na sa government schools, nagtatrabaho pa para sa sarili nila at para sa pamilya nila. So yung ibang mga activities, po pwede nilang gawin within a week. So kapag saan sila bakante, as long as they were able to, to, to meet the deadline set by teachers or they have agreed upon. Okay, promote autonomy. Yun yung, actually, that's uh, basically the, the, the product of allowing students to do it their way. So 79% of the participants in a study conducted felt that they become autonomous in engaging into blended learning. It requires learners to be more active. Okay, so and for them to be uh, more active, they have to have goal setting, time management strategies in the coursework. Kagaya ng sinabi ko, dahil yung iba sa kanila ay nagtatrabaho, so dapat maalam sila na, na gumawa ng tamang schedule para sa sarili nila. So halimbawa, magtatrabaho sila ng, ng ganitong oras, they would start, for example, from 7 to, to 12. So in the, magpahinga lang sila ng konti, in the afternoon, they could do their online activities or <clears throat> sorry if they're doing that in the morning they can do their activities in the evening at their most convenient time it helps students develop critical thinking as well okay why because they are going to determine asan ba dito sa mga gagawin ko yung yung talagang kailangan asan dito yung 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 mas mahalaga so by by doing this min mental activity, you are actually helping students develop critical thinking. However, this, there are also disadvantages of the blended learning. We know that, okay? Uh, initially, in the studies that I have conducted when I was preparing my, my modules, um, one of the downside of online learning is that, according to study, it's not totally sustainable. Sometimes kasi medyo nagiging cost din siya ng students withdrawal. 
we will discuss that at the at the latter part so one of the disadvantages of blended learning for teachers is the lack of IT training. Lalong lalo na nung nagsisimula pa lang yung yung online classroom, no, yung online class. So not all schools can provide. So I would like to again commend uh, Bival Publication for providing opportunities. It provided different activities, seminars, capacity training to teachers and leaders in order to to become adept and to adapt. Uh, different modalities and different skills that they need in order to to be more uh, effective and efficient particularly in incorporating their activities in the learning management system reduce uh, supervision um bucket dahil marami yung mga estudyante for example na nagkakaroon ng mga problema hindi siya makater lahat ni teacher so there's therefore a challenge for teacher to motivate students requiring more supervision. May mga estudyante dahil hindi nga sila matututukan, chances are ayaw na nila mag-participate. Yun yung sinasabi ko kaninang uh, students sometimes has uh, have the tendency to withdraw. Okay, lack of resources. Uh, blended learning requires right technology, equipment, and software. Some students don't have the, the access. Ito naman sa mga estudyante. Actually, ito yung isa sa mga malungkot na katotohanan. That is why the school and the, the division offices would provide um, variety of mechanism for students. Yung mga hindi afford yung digital classroom, uh, mayroon namang uh, noon uh, printed uh, modules. Yung iba, ginawa pa siyang libro. Okay? Uh, a module in a book form. So that students who don't have internet connection, they could still uh, be provided the, the, the necessary information that they need. Yung iba naman, uh, they were actually uh, other, for example, other division, nagkakaroon sila ng mga TV-based instruction, radio-based instruction. So yung aside from their module, there are other complementary activities na pwede nilang gamitin. Then technology. Uh, challenges. Meaning, uh, ito yung binanggit ko na kanina, there's the low internet, software are down, and students cannot access the courses, lalo-lalo na yung mga may LMS. So yung mga estudyante kung minsan hirap na hirap silang i-download yung mga activities or ipasa yung kanilang mga requirements. Kasi walang internet o kung minsan hindi naman nila ma-access yung, yung, uh, yung mga activity. Unlike di ba sa face-to-face, -face, isusulat lang ni teacher sa board, kaya nang kopyahin ng estudyante o kaya the teacher could just give a, a photocopy of the activity. Now, here are the, the tips. Ito naman yung mga tips. Ano naman yung mga pwede na nagawin ni teacher at ng estudyante to, to maximize the, the benefit of blended learning? Okay, number one, top different video conferencing tools like Zoom, MS Teams or Google Hangouts to hold live lectures. It allows teachers to define time to, to student to join and explain concepts. Kagaya ng ginagawa natin ngayon, siguro by this time, halos lahat na ng mga teachers familiar na sila sa mga conferencing tools. And uh, in the department, alam ko yung kalimita na ginagamit ay yung MS Teams. Kasi alam ko license yun. Yung ako naman on my personal end, ang pinaka a very um very comfortable very accessible ay yung zoom okay kahit mga estudyante mas nadalian silang gumamit uh, but still it depends on on the teacher it depends on the school kung ano yung provided sa students so ba basta lang tayong mga guro ma maalam tayo kung kung paano natin gamitin yung mga ganito okay um next uh, use free apps, okay? YouTube, uh, Vimeo, etc. to upload videos for students to watch. In one class, for example, a teacher would use a flip classroom mechanism. So, aram naman natin kung ano yung flip classroom. Sa flip classroom, pwedeng si teacher mismo yung magtuturo, i-upload niya doon sa, sa kanilang Google Classroom, for example, or doon sa LMS. 
Actually, pwede naman siyang gumamit ng mga recorded videos ng other teachers or resources as long as they are properly uh, cited or permission has been given to, to use all this material. And there's a lot of free uh, materials in the internet. But then again, as, as educators at teachers, dapat maalam lang tayo na ngayong mga content ng mga material that we are sharing with our students are actually according to the standards of the institution, of the department. Kasi mayroon dyang iba na medyo hindi naayos yung iba. Kaya uh, there has been circulations of some contents which are being uh, shunned, being ridiculed because they are not properly reviewed and quality assured. Teachers can record themselves or students or that can uh, students can watch them during their free time or as I mentioned po pwede naman na gumamit si teacher ng mga recorded videos from other teachers from other authors. Third, utilize classroom management system. Itong sinasabi ko kanina. Mayroon namang uh, Google Classroom, may Canvas, uh, and other LMS. Kung ang school nyo ay, ay mayroon, Bibal Publication is also providing one in a very affordable cost. Allow teacher to send notes to class, set up classroom in an organized way. Pwede ka din gumawa doon ng discussion board. Diba? Sabi natin, kung minsan kasi, students could find uh, the, the digital classroom very cold, very uh, impersonal. So to make it more personal for them, pwede kang mag-iwan ng discussion board o magtanong, nag-iwan ka ng tanong and then students are graded depending on how they respond to the question and how they respond to one another. Okay? Another is provide learning model for collaboration. So may mga iba't ibang paraan. So kagaya for example when I was still in a senior high school, ang tinuturo ko ay practical research nung uh face to face pa i would normally group students into three or four in in a group and then they will be the one to brainstorm their topic up to the completion of the research study nung nagkaroon na ng pandemya medyo nahirapan sila kasi nga bawal noon bawal pa pumunta sa bahay ng kaklase but there are different mechanism online that they could use okay in order to exchange ideas um, this is also one way of our student socialization para mabawasan yung kanilang boredom sa bahay. So, connected yung number four sa number five. If you allow students to collaborate, you're actually allowing them to socialize with one another. Pwede silang mga ngamusta, kamusta kayo. ba maraming naging kaso ng depression, anxiety, yung withdrawal, yung iba nagpakamatay pa. Kaya dapat ma maingat tayo pagdating dito. So by allowing socialization, we create chat channels for students to talk. So may mga pagkakataon na hindi naman natin kailangang maging, maging stricto doon sa ating group chat. Only that we have to be very careful. Tingnan natin yung, um, yung mga pinag-uusapan. Dapat critical pa din tayo na hindi siya na-abuse, walang mga malalaswa or abusive languages na ginagamit ng ating mga estudyante. Uh, number six, Set up clear expectations. Dapat malinaw. Parang uh, sa isang piloto, dapat alam mo kung, kung saan ka papupunta. Para alam mo yung mga hindi pwede at yung mga pwede, just like the students. So, uh, for students and for yourself and other members of the family. So, sa mga estudyante, for example, you could set up expectations as to the outputs. Ano ba yung ina-expect mo na outputs, their behavior also. And at home naman, Dapat malinaw din sa mga kasama mo sa bahay kung ano yung setup mo. For example, ngayon, nandito ako sa isang area ng bahay na kapag ganitong oras, for example, uh, ito'y oras ko sa, sa mga estudyante ko. So yung mga ibang mga dapat gawin, we will do that after this, this time. So ganun din dapat sa mga estudyante. So dapat uh, malinaw sa mga estudyante natin kung at this point, for example, at this week, ano ba yung ine-expect natin sa kanila na dapat isubmit sa atin? What are the, the, the class expectations for student to pass? Okay. Now, here are the tips for, for students naman. Ano naman yung mga pwedeng gawin ng mga estudyante in order for them to maximize um, 
the blended learning setup. One, a blended learning setup for students is beneficial when uh, they create consistent learning schedule or when the teacher create a consistent learning schedule. Di ba sabi natin yung habit ay nagsisimula yan sa practice. So, para nakakondisyon na din sa mga estudyante ba, doon sa kanilang mental framework, pwede ka magbigay ng uh, halimbawa every Tuesday, yun yung bigayan ng assignment. Pag Friday, yun yung quiz at pasahan ng assignment. O pwede ganun. Para uh, yung, yung kanilang uh, mentality ay nakakondisyon na. Okay. Uh, because there is sometimes the tendency okay, to, to sleep, okay, to lounge around, pero kung alam nila na ganitong oras, ito yung oras ng klase, dapat nandun sila. Okay? Have a study space. Ibig sabihin, you have to have a place in your area at home where you could study, where you could, as, as teachers naman, where we could teach for students, na alam niya kapag nandito siya sa area na to kailangan niya mag-aral. At ito ay para lang talaga sa, sa pag-aaral. Which is accessible to computer charging. Dahil nga gagamit siya ng computer. School supplies dapat within within the reach. no Yung mga study materials niya. Third, set up your technology. So dapat may ilaw. Nandyan yung laptop nyo. Um, nandyan yung cellphone nyo kung kinakailangan. Okay, so consider a location with high internet connection, lalong-lalo na dun sa mga full online yung kanilang mekanismo. Also, you must have an alternative source that can have new routers and hardware connections. In my case, dito for example sa bahay, mayroon wired naman yung aming internet, pero just in case na magda-down yung internet, we have a Wi-Fi na po pwede namang alternately magamit or in caso biglang nag-brown out, ay mayroon siyang battery na pwedeng magamit. Okay? Fourth, eliminate distraction. Uh, mas madali kasing mag-aral kapag uh, yung iyong paligid ay maayos. Okay? Uh, kasi kapag maraming clutter, mas marami kang iniisip, hindi ka masyado makapag-digest dun sa mga bagay na, na kailangan mong pag-aralan. Okay? Close social media apps, put cellphone in another room, connected ito mamaya doon sa pag-usapan natin na digital detox. As much as we try to maximize our gadgets during online class, it depends naman kung ano yung ginagamit mo. Siyempre, pag ang ginagamit mo yung laptop, dapat nandyan yung laptop. Kung ang ginagamit mo ay tablet, dapat nandyan yung tablet. Kapag ang ginagamit mo ay cellphone, nandyan yung cellphone. Okay? Yung mga hindi mo ginagamit, yun yun munang iset aside. Because it could sometimes create a distraction from, from you. Okay? If address stress issue, totoo ito. Hindi natin kailangan siyang it's a puera. Totoo talagang may stress, totoong may depression, totoong may anxiety, totoong may withdrawal. Students would write, ay, ayoko na. Uh, minsan yung nakakadurog ng puso, yung, yung simula ng pandemya, yung nakikita mo yung mga estudyante na Lalo na ng mga bata, umiiyak sa harap ng computer kasi unang-una hindi nila gamay. Pangalawa, nahihirapan silang mag-communicate dun sa teacher nila kasi naninibago sila. So, even adult students. So, if you think you are uh, encountering some stress issue in your study, you, you really have to, to dealt with that. Okay? And you could uh, do it yourself. And you could also ask the help of professionals. Ganyan yung kahalagahan ng ating last topic, yung digital detox. Assess your stressors and respond to it effectively. So you, you have to assess. Kung kaya mo naman, saan, bakit ba ako na si stress? Bakit ako na de depress Bakit ako na anxious Saan ba nang gagaling to? Dahil ba hindi ako nakakasagot ng tanong? Or dahil ba wala akong assignments? Or dahil wala akong internet? And then... Uh, as, as students or with the help of adults, you have to, to address this issue. Otherwise, it will affect your engagement, it will affect your performance in the class. Okay, so that's it. Now let's proceed to the second part of our discussion. So may it be online, may it be face-to-face. -face. It's still important that education provides and facilitate critical thinking skills or the 21st century skills that students need in order to live life during and after school okay and that's basically the purpose of education and this learning 
Uh, skills are sometimes known as forces. Okay? They are communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration. Napansin yung mga to ay uh, napasadahan na natin. But you know well that you are doing good as a teacher in a hybrid or blended learning if you are able to promote these are the minimum actually uh, critical thinking skills no communication skills critical thinking skills creativity and collaboration isa isahin natin yan and how are we supposed to promote uh, communication critical thinking creativity and collaboration in an online platform in a digital platform in a hybrid platform so the forces is actually known as the 21st century skills these are essential skills for the future workplace alam naman natin na kaya sila nag-aaral para magkaroon ng sariling trabaho o gumawa ng sarili magsimula ng sariling negosyo or for future studies and for for them to do whichever of that students must be able to develop these four important essential skills skills required by an average individuals or students in the course of providing for themselves for their family and eventually for society number one is communication so online learning digital platform environment requires students to communicate effectively and clearly kaya dito napakahalaga din ang papel ng ng teacher okay dapat malinaw na na communicate ng, ng teacher yung mga expectations from our students and also students concerns students need to be responsible for clarifying expectations of the course sabi natin kanina that one way of trying to assess and quality assured that our students are learning are based on the assessments that we give to them. Okay? May it be through performance tasks or through a quiz or through an exam. But for students to, to meet these expectations, dapat malinaw muna sa kanila. Ano ba yung mga expectations? And these things should be uh, communicated properly both ways. No Teacher to students and students should also clarify things that he wants to, to be enlightened with from the teachers so interactivity of online system requires a more fluid flexible and swift communication so dapat uh, ma-establish natin sa estudyante yung rapport as we continue our hybrid and blended learning dapat maramdaman niya na hindi threat yung yung ganitong setup that this is actually mutually uh, beneficial for students and teachers okay um, next, communicating online is critical in, te uh, in technology as we move into an artificial intelligence-driven environment. So, ngayon, di ba, um, lalo lang na enhance yung artificial intelligence mechanism. Um, alam natin yan. No? Uh, kaya nga, as we try to continue to engage into this new platform, we must be able to communicate and to understand its genre, its language, its mechanism. And that is why we continue to capacitate students and teachers. So that um, dapat palaging bukas yung ating communication line. Kasi otherwise, kapag ang mga estudyante ay nagkaroon ng problema dun sa proseso at hindi natin nasagot, yung mga susunod nun medyo malabo na sa kanya kasi hindi niya makonek. Diba? Kaya nga, Remember yung proximal development ni Vygotsky na for students to be able to to really retain the the, the knowledge the 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 things that they learn dapat makita niya yung connection ng isang konsepto sa isang konsepto that's the importance of review that's why we always start our class with a review to connect diba we always as ano yung connect because our mental framework, our mental activity can only easily process ideas if it has connection to, to one another. Critical thinking. Teachers ask students to adapt viewpoints different from their original thesis in order to teach them the function of bias in how they think about the world. So dito dapat tuturuan, maturuan ng mga guru, yung mga estudyante to, to, to accept other ideas aside from their own. And also the teachers. Uh, alam naman natin na yung mga guru ay hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon ay tama. So dapat din maging bukas din yung guru kapag siya ay kinukorek ng estudyante. Marani ng mga estudyante who are very inquisitive. They can learn a lot of things through internet. So I think it's more on a mutual basis. So 
uh, teachers should empower students to 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 embrace other point of view to understand one's point of view and the same thing you know that teachers should also be open when students would like to present a different point of view so that's critical thinking ah kaya pala okay so that's why as as we try to 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 read our news feeds in in the facebook wag nating kaagad paniwalaan as it's face value marami diyan kasing fake news okay marami diyan ay edited na so and as as critical thinkers all we have to do is to go to the original source na maya diyan yung mga video na pinapakita para siraan yung ibang tao lalong-lalo na ngayong election ay hindi pala yun yung kabuuan okay so we must go back to the original source and from there we must be able to understand saan talaga nag-uugat ng ganitong issue it's only when we are able to sa, sa law school nga no uh, palaging sinasabi ng mga ng mga professor sa law school do not only rely on digest so kapag nagbabasa kayo ng mga kaso wag lang dun sa digest basahin niyo yung kabuuan okay para alam niyo yung totoong uh, uh, pangyayari ang totoong dahilan kung bakit ganito yung naging desisyon ng korte Online forums and discussions can be carefully moderated by educators with an eye to keeping online discussions flowing, yet demanding rigorous motivation and explanation from participants. Itong sinasabi ko. So palaging bukas yung, yung ating kaisipan, dapat students have their platform to communicate ideas. Dapat kapag ang estudyante halimbawa magpe-present ng kanyang pagkaunawa sa isang konsepto na ang pinag-uusapan natin, you could ask the classmate, uh, what can you say about the opinion, about the point of your classmate? Are you amenable? If yes, why? If not, why not? Okay, so that actually uh, develops critical thinking among our students. Third is creativity. Creativity now is the highest form of learning in the Maslow's um, hierarchy. Um, Hindi na yung dati kasi, di ba, may, mayroon tayong knowledge, understanding, um, evaluating, so on and so forth. Ang pinanakamataas na, na paraan ng pagkatuto ay ang paggawa, creating. Kapag ang estudyante ay nakagawa ng isang bagay na makakabuti sa sarili niya, sa lipunan, sa pamilya niya, because of what we taught inside and outside of the class, that is the highest form of learning. That's creativity when they become innovative, when they are able to create inventions to better the world. I, in, in one of the talks I, I attended, there was this professor in one university who says that yung mga estudyante niya na mga grade school, um, ang kanilang output palagi ay gumawa ng isang bagay out of that class na pwedeng maging solusyon ng problema ng, ng lipunan. And they created something from the materials that they could find around. So creativity. So ganyan din yung mga estudyante. When we provide students problems in society and we ask them, ano kaya yung, yung magiging uh, solusyon sa'yo? Ano yung pwede nating gawin? Okay, can you create a program? Kaya di ba yung... Yung, yung drone, di ba? Nakikita natin kung paano yan na-develop. Tapos nakita natin yung problema ng traffic sa, sa Pilipinas. May naka-invento ng ngayon pwede na siyang masakyan ng tao. Kaya nga sabi ko in my futuristic mind, darating yung panahon na yung nakikita natin sa sci-fi ay maging totoo. Yung mga tao hindi lang sumasakay sa train, hindi lang sumasakay sa sasakyan. May sumasakay na din. Sumabawasan na yung traffic. Yung problema lang baka maging traffic naman sa taas. But that that beside the point. No? So teachers should have a firm hand in developing through intellectual creativity in designing lessons. Kaya dapat magiging uh, maalam talaga si teacher habang kinakrap niya yung lesson niya. The focus is not only on what students can find out, okay? not only discovery, but what students can do out of that discovery in order to, to help society, to help himself, to help develop himself and his or her family. And lastly, collaboration. Kaya nga, di ba, sabi natin, man is a, a social animal. No? is a gregarious being. Uh, palagi gusto niya may kasama. Kaya kung minsan, uh, if you want also to enhance engagement of students, provide them with group activities, collaborative activities, even in research. No? Even teachers, when I'm giving trainings, for example, to, to schools and universities, 
and there are newbies in in the research um world research circle we normally ask them to collaborate with uh with experienced researchers that will be their mentor ganun din sa mga estudyante so you could ask them to to group themselves pwede according to their to their learning styles or pwede man magkaiba no kasi halimbawa yung isa magaling sa drawing yung isa magaling sa internet sa 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 technology yung isa magaling magsulat that could also be a collaboration the cut and trust of classroom discussion is missing in online classroom the focus is fostering focus responsible time management and self motivation yan yung mga naging challenge before therefore the the the, the response is an online environment in which it is rich with cultural diversity na kahit magkaiba yung kanilang learning styles they are still able to collaborate and create um, an output which is actually beneficial to to all beneficial to majority not only to themselves and um i have uh last uh, 15 minutes um i'm supposed to discuss one more topic after this but titingnan natin kung hanggang saan tayo matatapos we could have other time for that now let's proceed with ito naman mga tips of online teaching in the midst of pandemic yung iba nito ay pinag-usapan na natin yung iba naman ay bago so yung mga na, na discuss na natin hindi na natin siya i-elaborate masyado so una sabi natin adapt a synchronous mindset so uh, sometimes yung stress ay dahil yung mga estudyante hindi makapag uh, join sa sa zoom sa sa teams so may may actually mayroong ano mayroong tension biglang nag brown out wala or walang internet that is why another way of providing students way to learn is by adapting asynchronous kaya nga yung iba ginagawa na yan mayroong asynchronous activity may synchronous activity or a hybrid activity just like the classroom okay so students contribute discussion or become proactive to start everyone contributes when they can so walang masyadong pressure pero dapat malinaw sa kanila yung expectations okay at dahil sabi ko nga may mga estudyante na nagtatrabaho they will only contribute at their uh, free time okay don't overwhelm with your students uh don't overwhelm your students dahil sa, alam naman natin kung gaano kadami yung mga activities ng students so kung pwede mag-usap-usap yung mga teachers halimbawa monday uh, magbibigay yung teacher na ganito ng activities tuesday ganito wag naman sabay-sabay tuesday wag sabay-sabay monday para naman hindi ma magka information overload yung mga estudyante or lalong na stress alam isipin natin na hindi lang tayo yung teacher ng mga estudyante so one way of doing that is to talk among teachers among yourselves para ma ma ayos yung mga ganitong sistema and that is where the the school leader comes in do not panic lalong lalo na yung mga hangga ngayon hindi pa din nakakasunod ng mga guro po pwede kayo in your own time nandiyan naman si YouTube nandiyan si Google you could always learn or you could ask some experts to help you or attend seminars like this that will capacitate you to become more effective teachers okay next learn to share okay palagi nating sinasabi sa sa eskwelahan mayroon tayong tinatawag na minsan peer teaching okay dalawang teacher yung uh, yung nagtuturo sa isang subject muna si teacher muna ng isa yung isa dun sa isang klase niya tapos salitan based on expertise so po pwedeng ganun or you could also share resources kapag mayroon ka ibahagi mo sa sa mga kasamahan mo malaking tulong ito sa kanila Okay, sharing is caring. School needs centralized libraries. Sa ngayon, dalawang taon na tayong nasa pandemya, so malamang ang dami na nating mga modules na nagawa. Uh, yung iba niyan ay nakakategorize na, okay, na, nasa bank na, mayroon na silang centralized library. Ang kakailangan na lang nila is to contextualize yung mga, yung mga information doon halimbawa na hindi na relate, uh, relatable, na hindi na up to date, yun na lang yung babaguhin. Pero yung sistema nandun pa din. Okay, reach out to your colleagues, no? lalong-lalo na yung mga uh, challenge nating mga, mga kasama sa trabaho. We have to reach out to them kasi alam natin hindi lang naman eskwelahan yung pinuproblema nila. Pati yung kanilang pamilya or pati yung kanilang sarili, umalay nyo may pinagdadaanan sila. So, reaching out to them is, is a big help for them. Okay, so 
I think I will stop from here. The rest of the, the details so we could discuss maybe in some other venues. So once again, I hope you were able to learn insights on how to uh, manage the blended learning classroom uh, during this time of the pandemic. If you have some questions, you may raise it after this talk. So once again, I would like to thank our coordinators, especially Ms. Jell, for, for always stopping us to share our insights. So sa inyong mga kabibal, mag-ingat kayo palagi at patuloy tayong maging a productive and effective educators despite of our limitations during this pandemic. Papasaan at matatapos din to balik na tayo sa, sa dati nating mga classroom. But dala-dala natin, baon-baon na natin yung mga kaalaman, hindi lang doon sa mga nakaraan na, na mga mechanism, but uh, incorporating now our, our experiences, our insights in the blended learning mechanism. So once again, uh, this is uh, Dr. Leonilo Bicapolso. Uh, I am a researcher from Colorado Global School in Colorado, USA, and uh, an instructor also in Organita City University. If you have some concerns, you could actually message me in 0933-556-4886. That is my personal number. So once again, thank you very much for allowing me to share. Mga kabibal, mag-ingat kayong palagi, okay? Sana safe lang tayo lahat. Okay? Paalam! There we have it. In behalf of Ibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this indeed very timely and eye-opening learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to all our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vival Facebook and YouTube channels channel. Also, create your accounts at eTuro. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Hi teachers, this April 24, Vibal brings you the V-Smart Quizby. Think you have what it takes to ace the quiz? Answer questions from science, math, English, Filipino, social studies, religion, and pop culture. Just form a team of five students from grade 7 to 10, and they will go head-to-head -head with other schools across the Philippines. Our overall champion will take home 100,000 pesos. Registration is open until April 2022. So what are you waiting for? Register now!